It's not unusual to see a newly released game attempt to stand in the shadows of its predecessors, but it is exceedingly rare to see one of these games meet its forerunners shoulder to shoulder, especially when the shadows they cast are as long as you could find anywhere in video games. I think it's fair to say that Breath of the Wild is a masterpiece of modern gaming, and I don't say that lightly. It's a game that's not afraid to cast away parts of its series tradition, and in doing so, it has preserved the core of what makes Zelda great better than most other games in the series. Whether or not you think it deserves the praise it's been getting, you can't deny that Breath of the Wild is a landmark title in the Zelda franchise. For better or worse, the series will now forever be divided into before Breath of the Wild and after Breath of the Wild. In this video, I'm going to talk about the music of Breath of the Wild and how it perfectly reflects the game's bold new direction for the series as well as its obvious respect for its legacy. First things first, what's new about this soundtrack? Well, as it turns out, quite a lot. In my first ever YouTube video, I looked at the overworld themes of each console Zelda game up until that point and talked about what made them sound like Zelda music and how the changes in each theme reflected the personality of the game it belonged to. Let's continue that trend by looking at Breath of the Wild's Hyrule Field theme. This theme has been controversial to say the least, with people accusing it of sounding like random notes on a piano, someone just played piano for the first time, and god-awful. And no, it is not an exciting, bombastic, or even particularly adventurous piece of music. But what it lacks in energy, it makes up for in mood, and the subtlety and craft on display are nothing short of impressive. While it may seem like random notes at first, the song actually takes us through a complete musical journey, leading me to believe that the composition process was very deliberate. The first two notes immediately put us in the key of E-flat. It's admittedly kind of a fragile perception of the key, as there's no harmony to speak of, but this 2-1 melodic figure is a very common way of melodically defining a key center. Notice how throughout these opening few phrases, we keep coming back to a B-flat. This, being the fifth in the key of E-flat, keeps the music from resolving and keeps your ear looking forward to what's coming next. Each successive phrase gradually builds an intensity up until this point, where we slow things back down as we're introduced to a key element of all the other overworld themes and, I'd say, Zelda music in general, mode mixture, specifically the flat seven. The flat 7 chord, borrowed from the key's parallel minor scale, is present in almost every other Zelda overworld theme, and is commonly used in fantasy music to create a heroic or adventurous mood. In this case though, it adds a somberness to the music that wasn't there before. We've moved from our comfortable home world to an other world, and this is why I say the composition was deliberate. It's creating a story, an abstract one to be sure, but one that's definitely there. The next few phrases outline a D flat 7 chord before we get this leap down from D flat to E flat, mirroring the very beginning of the piece. This fourth is harmonically ambiguous. 
We've just been dabbling around in E-flat minor, but the piece has already been established to us in E-flat major, and with no third to speak of, these notes could imply either. I believe this ambiguity between major and minor is at the heart of what makes Zelda music sound like Zelda music, and this interval to me absolutely captures the essence of the series. The climax of the piece comes next, with this big, bright B-flat over E-flat chord putting us back in our major tonality without giving us that defining third. This is by far the lowest note we've heard thus far, which makes it stand out all the more. Now we get the resolution, a final struggle, so to speak, as we return back to our home world of E-flat major. The D-flat 7 chord we'd been dancing around returns with a vengeance, with this harsh roll down of a D-flat 13 chord, an ominously low bass note. In the end, though, we finally get our unambiguous major tonality as the last three notes outline an E-flat major 7, third and all. This piece so perfectly captures the spirit of the game. Gone are the descending major chords, the strong orchestral melodies, and the galloping rhythms. This piece is simple, subtle, and perfectly suited to roaming around the ruins of an ancient, once noble kingdom. I've heard people say that this game feels like the real Zelda story, and that all the previous games were just like legends that you'd hear in Breath of the Wild's world. I'd have to say listening to this piece, I feel the same way. Thank you guys so much for watching part one of my four part series on Breath of the Wild's soundtrack. If you want to know when the next three parts are going to come out, you can subscribe to the channel, and if you don't want to know when these videos come out, you can still subscribe, but just don't click on that little bell thing. Follow me on Twitter at 8BitMusicTheory if you're tired of following people who tweet ever. And if you want to support the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon page. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.